So welcome everyone to today's podcast with Nikki Cashbowl of TBR and me, Dave Smith of Inflow Analysis, and our great guest, Esteban Koski, head of CX strategy for SAP. Esteban has been a CX Cosmic Sprints thought leader for many years. And Esteban, I know you back from our days at Gartner. So welcome, my friend. Thank you. And thanks for having me here. And uh, it sounds really good when you say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can you do me a favor and tell me what I'm doing also? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Now, for those that know Esteban, I I've always appreciated him for being one of the few that kind of cuts through the BS and tells you straight like it is. So uh, kudos for you on that. So I'm looking for a lot of that type of uh, conversation today, <laughs> which yeah, is good. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best to be uh, sincere and honest and uh, funny, but I don't promise on the last one. Though. <laughs> exactly. And Nikki, so this is a topic your customer experience six, that we really haven't dealt into uh, as a whole segment before. So I'm looking forward to this conversation today. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. And you know, thanks, Esteban, for joining us today. Um, Dave and I started this podcast really as the pandemic got started and was kind of an excuse for us to um, keep in touch with each other. And we, you know, we've had many interesting guests along the way. Um, and at the outset, we really found that the focus of these conversations was on survival versus experience, on how companies stay afloat and safely serve their customers when the, all of this was exploding around us. And but that's not to say that survival isn't still top of mind for many individuals and companies, but yeah. there appears to be a shift now back to how to serve the customer and how their experience may be fundamentally changing, but in this new environment. So. Um, that's, I think that'll really be the crux of what I would like to get your perspective on. But um, you know, before yeah. we get into that, can you give us a little background on yourself and your role at SAP to help us um, set the stage? Sure. So I, uh, uh, I, I've been at SAP for six months. So I, I'm, I'm not a, no longer new at this job. I know what I'm doing really well now. <laughs> um, I am I, the head of strategy, I run strategy, I do the chief strategy of a big one of those, I don't care whatever you do. But basically, um, you know, I, I like, like David said, I've been doing this for a while. I, I wrote one of the original pieces on customer experience back in 2001 with Ed Thompson when I was a gardener. Mm -hmm. And uh, shout out to my boy Ed, who's probably one of the foremost experts in the customer strategy, the customer experience world. Um, he's still a gardener. Uh, you know, we, we wrote the first thing. So I've been working on this for a while. And along the line, I met some great people. I worked with some great vendors. And uh, uh, the person who's currently my Bob, my, my boss, whose name is Bob, uh, my boss uh, called me when he got to SAP. He also got hired about eight months ago. And he said, hey, you know, you always tell me how we need to do this right. Well, it's your opportunity to come and do it. And I'm like, well, no, but that takes away the whole mysticism of it, you know. <laughs> but... <laughs> Apparently, like my, like all my friends tell me, I was a genius because I, I, I chose the right time to get a real job versus being an analyst. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been doing this for six months. Uh, I came here to, to put a strategy together for SAP for CX um, as a way to, uh, you know, be kind to the people before me. We, we, we lacked on direction and strategy for quite a few years. So we're just putting things together in a better way now. That's awesome. Um, that's one. Uh, the, the rest of my, my time, I spent 20 years as an analyst. Out of those years, I was a gardener. Um, I was a consultant before that. I was a practitioner, meaning that I actually did the job. I have done almost every job in, in customer service from answering the phones in a call center to uh, implementing, managing, and running call centers and contact centers to creating strategies to basically being here today. So in between in the last 30 so years, I've done everything that used to be done about CRM and customer service. That's awesome, man. Thank you. And so, well, actually leading into that then, can you sort of give us a, a definition or define what is CX? What is customer experience? What do you want it to be? Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> no, that's 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 a definition. What do you want it to be? Interesting. <laughs> you know, the, the worst thing you can do is, as a company or as a brand is think you can define the experiences for your customers. Mm -hmm. Your customers define their own experiences, and it's likely to be different and, and, and whatever they want every single time. You know, your job went from – back. I have in my blog, if anybody cares to go look at that, uh, back in 2000. 8, 2009, 10, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. I wrote a seven-part series on how to actually create awesome experiences, right? Mm -hmm. my, my first job once I left Gardner, uh, spent a little time with a vendor that didn't work. But after that, I created a company and my goal was going to be a consultant on how to create awesome experiences. And in the process, I learned that 
we cannot create experiences. Our mm. customers decide what the experience is. I mean, I, I was only half joking when I said, what do you want the experience to be? You as a customer, you as an employee, decide and define what you want that experience to be every single time that you interact with an organization. So my job as a brand, my job as a company is not to create a great experience, not to design a great experience, mm -hmm. not to understand your journey and deliver your journey in the best way possible, but to create the best solution that I can so you can interact with a solution, whether it is through self-service, through an agent, through a technician that's in front of you, or any other way mm -hmm. that you can create and define your own experience every single time the way that you need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of those mechanisms by which you are, are enabled or empowered to, to extract what a customer has as their own unique experience? I mean, every organization has thousands of customers, any large organization. How yeah. is that feasibly possible? I'm just thinking logistically, because I think people, organizations like to fundamentally bucket people into types. And you know, How do you kind of buck what that actually means and, and logistically kind of fulfill what you just outlined? So, so I think that Verizon Wireless has 124 million customers, right? And every single one of those customers should feel like Verizon Wireless service or, or experiences exist only for them. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge, right? How do you do that? I'm not going to take you through, down through technology because there's technologies that can help you do that. And we can talk about those, you know, in, in the back end of this. But the reality is like it's not about the technology making it do, and it's about changing the mentality in the organization mm. first and foremost. Your organization needs to understand that your role has changed, right? If you go, and I hate to do this, but once an analyst, always an analyst, right, David? Exactly. So, oh, historical perspective on how we got here, right? Customers used to control, I mean, the companies used to control everything. They used to control interactions, conversations, what customers were able to get, how they were able to get it, when they were able to get it. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to assume anything on anybody's age, but I still remember when customer service was an eight to five job, right? Or customer service could only be done if you call this number or you couldn't send an email or you couldn't like, you know, uh, go to a, a self-service report or things like that. That's when the company was able to control that. Then sometime in the 2005-ish plus minus a couple of years, you know, with, with the advent of social networks, the advent of online communities, you know, the, the customer became empowered to actually have expectations and demand things in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything changed because now the company couldn't, could no longer say, hey, you're going to do things my way, right? Yeah. So now the company needed to actually provide access to systems and data and results and information and knowledge and all these things that they didn't have to before. And that's what we've been going through the last 15 years is this transition from, you know, we do what we want, so we have to do what the customer asks mm -hmm. to, hey, let's find a way where we both get what we want in the middle. And that's basically it. Yeah, there's technology and there's like data considerations and there's, you know, all these things. But first thing you, do, you need to do is change your mentality. Mm -hmm. Not that experience is what's going to help you differentiate and that your customers expect the experience. You're going to give them experiences. But to the point that like, you know, we move from controlling the way things get done to having two-way conversations with customers and re redefining the way we do things. And that's that's the first step in, in, in that process. Interesting. And so how do you think then, especially what we've been, we've been going through with the pandemic and now, you know, on this, what we're calling what, the new normal, right? Or as Nikki calls it, the new yep. abnormal, <laughs> right? You know, how does then CX, uh, uh, how does strategy shift the change moving forward? But it's, it's the same as everything else. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the new normal or the new new, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, right? I mean, it, it's a similar thing that was happening. Businesses have been transforming for, for centuries. So it's not, I mean, it was a lot faster, granted, yeah. right? <laughs> we had three years instead of 30 years, or, <laughs> or maybe three months instead of 30 years, right? But even within that, that concept of, of speed, we still need to figure it out what it is that, 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 that matters. And that hasn't changed. Still, what matters is the same that matters, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Customers need to get what they want to get. You know, we, we changed it from one-way communications to two-way communications. Uh, we need to, you know, find a way to engage customers so that they feel that they're in power and they feel like, you know, they're in the right place and they feel that they're doing things the right way, blah, blah, blah. So this is the things that, like, you know, little by little you, you, start, you start saying. So that hasn't changed. It accelerated. Yeah. So now things that, that you were potentially planning to do over the next year, two years, three years, they got done in the last two months. Yeah. You know, good or bad. You know what happens when you do things uh, quickly. You don't really get 
the full value proposition <laughs> that you were hoping to get, right? You, in some cases, you don't have the budgets to get what you need to spend. In some cases, you don't have the people to do what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So so you just need to accelerate these things. But it's just it's an acceleration in, in, in a traditional business transformation that takes you from one model to the next one. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what I don't want is I don't want people to think that like, you know, because this happened, you need to throw everything away and, and, and create a complete different way of, of working. You don't. You you, yeah. you need to sell online. So there's technology to help you with that. And mm-hmm. each technology requires, you know, changes within the organization and mentality and data and so forth. And that's what you're going to do. And you're just going to try to get to do it faster. You're right. I think, you know, you mentioned before, you know, how I guess with the advent of social media and, and so forth, it, it really began to change the dynamics. I remember, gosh, around maybe mid to late 2000s or so, you know, I was on American Airlines flight that, you know, was like delayed at JFK going to San Francisco and I was going to miss my connection. For some reason, I was connecting through Phoenix. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Come on, man. Phoenix is awesome. <laughs> exactly. You know, so, you know, connected through and I was going to miss my connection and you know because some mechanical thing happened whatever so I remember tweeting my displeasure at American Airlines you know for what's going on with this plane why is it moving and they immediately began to you know respond to me on on, on Twitter right and, and and they you know reassured me that my connection was intact and that we'll get there on time and it scared me that they knew my name so that was kind of creepy right <laughs> I'm like how do you actually know who I am I'm, this, this is my Twitter handle <laughs> but they knew who I was but the it represented the power that you know now we had you know, that sort of transformation that brands recognize that individual consumers now have power and they have access to them more so than ever before they probably yeah. know what pant size you wear now. I mean, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, 10 totally. years ago, 15 years ago. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it is scary to your point, um, you know, just the degree of knowledge. But you know, people complain about it and say it's creepy. But on the other hand, people also complain when they have to explain themselves at, to, to organizations and they assume a kind of intimacy with their habits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that's what it is, right? I mean, we, we're not talking about anything that's rocket science or different from before. You know, it's just, it just, it happens faster. But, but so now let's let's expand the conversation. Let's say what happens if you haven't really embraced this thing in the last 10 years? Mm-hmm. Then you're screwed. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> you know, if, if you haven't even thought about customer experience over the last 10 years, it ain't going to happen in three months. You know, <laughs> this thing requires like some massive ground, you know, grassroots, uh, you know, basic yeah. uh, work to be done that you need, you need to have done before. What what are the foundational building blocks of organizations that you are seeing succeed in, in you know being able to you know, effectively pivot or whatever you want to call it versus those that might have had a foundation built on sand versus none at all? Well, so, so I mean, so two ways to look at it, right? I mean, I always look at these things again, as I said, once an analyst, always an analyst, but I always look at these things. And it's like it can't just be one thing. So that, there's five things that I look at, right? People, process, technology, governance, and metrics. So. You know, along those five lines, you're going to realize that things have changed. I mean, metrics are no more, no longer efficiency, but they're effectiveness metrics. And the customer get what they needed, right? Governance means you had to establish a dialogue and go back and forth and understand customers better. People talk about, you know, customer journeys as like the way to, mm-hmm. to, to, to go forward, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, you know, but but in reality, it's 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 more, uh, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's not the, the, the way to go forward. So uh, governance is about, a, uh, let's write that again. Governance is about conversations and changing the way, you know, the mentalities in, within the organization. Culture in the organization needs to change to reflect the fact that we believe the customer, not, not that the customer is right, but the customer has the right to get something, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Uh, 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 what else am I missing? Uh, process. All your processes are going to be optimized by digitization. I mean, they, 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 the number one thing that you get from going digital is you get excellent insights into what works, you know, and what doesn't work, mm-hmm. right? So, so you know, they, then, then you, you need to do that. Uh, and, and then, you know, people process technology. I think that we cover everything. But technology is just, you know, Technology is easy. That's the easy solution. It's always been the easy solution. Yeah. It is, it's a platform solution, ecosystems. You 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 create end-to-end experiences with the best possible uh, world. Blah blah blah. You know, that's that's the easy part. 
if you're going to go with a, with a technology-only solution, you're going to fail anyway, so let's not do that. But that's the easy part. You know, the biggest parts are like, you know, governance and metrics and culture and people and processes and, and, and then align all that stuff. So that's one way to look at it, right? What is it that you have to look at? The other one is like, you know, uh, you know, what is it that makes you remain relevant, sustainable, mm -hmm. and, and, and like, you know, able to continue operations in, the, in, in any environment, right? Yeah. You know, not only here, we've been embarked on business transformation and digital transformation for close to a decade now. So what, 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 are we, what are the effects of that? All these changes that we've been making over time get us to the point that we need to go forward. So, so you know, if you don't want to look at the five things that I, that, I, that, that I mentioned, then just focus on, like, you know, how do you remain a viable entity in this, this new world? What do you need to do so that your customers continue to buy from you and you continue to control your costs in a way that actually, you know, Make, makes you makes you makes you be a, a, a good company sorry guys i was on mute again oh my gosh dave you're gonna have to edit that out <laughs> no worries okay, that was so a good like, sound that was a good sound, <laughs> thank sorry. you the, the best question of the day oh sorry um so it's fine no you don't need to edit it out i mean seriously this is this is what it is like i mean post pandemic we're all into this informal world that yeah. It, it, what matters is not the formality and the process as much as the outcome. So that's that's what happens to CX also. It's a great mm -hmm. example of a good experience. <laughs> exactly. I like I like how you spun that and actually made it real and relatable because I don't think anyone listening has hasn't had at this point um, like a dog barking excessively oh, yeah. or a baby or <laughs> been, um, talking I, for thirty I, seconds on mute. <laughs> oh yeah, it's I have life. I have two dogs, two cats. And I used to have two kids, but we don't talk about that. So. <laughs> that's that's for the, our after hours podcast. Most, most exactly. <laughs> what happened to your kids? Kids? What kids? <laughs> yeah. your kids? I don't know what you're talking about. Did I have kids? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe before all this thing. I mean, who knows? You know what it's like to be locked in your house with your two kids for six months, 24 hours a day? <laughs> and one kid, I mean, no kids, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I get in trouble. I know that, you know. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I think anyone listening with any kids or pets is certainly um, identifying with that. I have some friends who had kids in a small, you know, Brooklyn apartment, and I certainly don't know how they do it. So I think the point is very well taken. So, well, you know, it's funny, Nikki. It's 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 funny. It's talking about the CX and the customer experience. This is one thing that brands, I think, companies begin to realize that there's also an employee experience that that you know also ties in as well too. And so, you know, yeah, we're all here stuck at home, working, kids and dogs and pets stuff like that. Like, we just need to be human, you know, and 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 not yeah. worry about this crap. <laughs> Well, so, so how about in that model, I mean, how about if we change, right? I mean, SAP, and I'm not saying this because of SAP, but SAP has uh, two two uh, HR solutions. One is SAP HR and the other one is Success Factors, which my, my partner, uh, she works for Success Factors. And we live in the same house and we live in the, we work in the same house together. So I get both sides. I get the employee yeah. uh, experience and I get the customer experience, right? I mean, the interesting thing is when, when when we hear that the person on the phone, we are like, you know, I know exactly what you're saying. Just change employee for customer, we get the same the same <laughs> soundbite, right? It, it, there's no difference in these things. They go hand in but, hand. But, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 way I was going is like SAP adopted uh, as a marketing team for uh, HR, HXM, which is human experience management now. So you know, it, it, it's all about being humans and managing this experience one way or the other. Right. Interesting. Do you think now that people are just physically more dispersed and even as people can slowly roll back to work, it, it really in all likelihood will not be the same again. Do you think yeah. people are becoming more accepting and flexible of their customer experience? Or do you think because we've now experienced this sudden flexibility with its you know challenges that come that people will become more demanding and that, co that companies will have to be more customer centric to your definition and realize that everyone has their own breakfast schedules and their own kids and that the nine to five mantra that people had to like shove themselves into um, really will likely never be to the extent that it was before. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, you, you were talking and I'm thinking, so, so first of all, I work from home for 23 years. So when people are like, you know, how hard is it to work from home? I'm like, 
I don't remember what it's like not to work from home. <laughs> you know, I, I cut my hair for 12 years. So people complain they can't get a haircut. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's the same that it's always been. <laughs> and I, I don't like people, but you know, to be staying away from people, it's not a problem. So I, I was made for this pandemic in instance, but, 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 but the thing is like, you know, um, I, I have some people in my team, they, they, they have, you know, troubles and challenges with their kids and the pets, like you were saying earlier. Right. And, and but, even even within that, they still would not change what they have. They still don't want to go back to the office, and not because they're afraid of like you know what they may get or whatever. They just they think that like you know they, they, the model is much more leading to 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 a better experience for the employee and better experience for what we're doing, right? We, we can't just say we're going to create excellent experience for for our customers, but screw our employees. Yeah. So so we need to be able to find a way to do that. I mean, I was actually having a conversation. Uh, with somebody else before they came on this podcast that we were talking about this. We were saying like, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge our customers found in moving to this model was just how do you actually deploy the solutions for customer service in, in, in people's homes? Once that, that was overcome, then they saw all the benefits of having somebody at home and being flexible time and, and, and like doing things at the proper time. And, you know, it, what was it? Somebody said uh, not that long ago that, Productivity increased so much that we can go back to four-day weeks the way we're working and still cover more work than before, right? <laughs> so so it, all these things are actually, they, they need to be considered. I agree with you. It's not going to go back to where we were. I, I have no intention of going to an office for a very, very, very long time, yeah. you know, and, 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 and my boss is fine with that. I, I mean, we, we talked about it when we first started and they said, look, I just want you to know that I don't care what you what the company asked me to do, I'm not going anywhere until there's a vaccine that is proven to work for at least a year. So I, I won't see anybody in real life for two or three years. Like he's like, I feel the same way. I'm okay with that. You know, so. <laughs> but I hear you. I mean, it's funny. And, you know, with all this talk about the future of work, like you sort of sort of talking to this right now, you know, where do you see us, I guess, going then, like in a couple of years, you know, in, in terms of work culture and what have you? Because I, I, first of all, I hate the term future work because we're very present, you know, but yeah. <laughs> where, where do you see us going? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the concept of the future of work. It's work is work. It continues to evolve. You always yeah. have to know what you will continue, right? Well, that's about what we'd love to do is and we, we, we ask, especially, um, you know, the, the guests that are, you know, able to kind of create a really great arc of where we were and where we're going. And, you know, you opened with the point that things are accelerating so quickly. And, you know, of course, no one ever saw this coming. So we would love to have you back once you've settled even more into your into your real job. <laughs> and, <laughs> any, um, any time. I mean, I, I, absolutely I'd any time. Yeah, I'd love to see like what you've seen over the last three months because I think three months is like what you would have seen over the last three years. Maybe I'm making that up. Um, you know, in the past, <laughs> and, uh, it's always kind of interesting to see um, you know, the, the giant leaps that some areas are taking, especially like customer experience seems to be, and then sometimes the not so giant ones in areas that are um, unexpected. Yeah. You know, the, the interesting thing is like, and, and David knows this because we both work at Gardner, but the, the biggest value proposition that a Gardner analyst has is that it, it's become the the, 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 the the crossroads of everything, right? Every Everybody who works in the market goes through a Gardner analyst, whether they're a consultant or a practitioner or, or other analysts, or everybody goes through Gardner. So you, you're sitting in a privileged position that you hear everything and you see everything, <laughs> right? Absolutely. I, mean, I, come do, on, I David. do feel at the crosshairs of privilege right now. I think I'm, I feel like I've almost um, gone through the Gardner experience just by <laughs> virtue of knowing Dave and through this podcast. Well, but that's that's the value proposition for Gardner. <laughs> the, the, the magic quadrants are are, are, are are like, you know, decorations, right? They, they, there's nothing there that's valuable, to be honest. I mean, salespeople love them, yay, but that's not what I care about. I mean, what, what I truly believe the value proposition is, is you need to be, a, a you know, a, a, an aggregator, synthesizer, and the disseminator of information. Yeah. Know, that's that's what we're doing here, right? So Absolutely. anytime that you want to, you know, have me talk, happy to. I, I, I probably talk more than I should. So, you know, you just need a platform for that, but it is what it is. We're, we are where we are. Hey, Sorry. That's awesome. Hey, hey. Thing, we're happy to be your platform anytime. This was great. Yeah. yeah thank you. We love you talking. So, we call that personal branding, I guess, right? And then, <laughs> I, 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 I have never said I'll be here forever. I'm here until they tell me it's time to go and then I'll find what I do next. So like everybody else. 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Esteban, for joining us. This has been a great discussion. Thank you, David, and thanks, Nick. Yeah, take care.